I've got breaking news, people. Just a few short weeks ago, I made a video and uploaded it to YouTube.com. It was called, How Rare Is Your 16 Personalities Type? In that video, I went through the statistics of what percentage each personality type is in the general population. But shortly after uploading that video, a commenter brought it to my attention that the numbers I used are outdated. They are inaccurate. In fact, they're not uh, even real. They are obsolete. Now wait a second before you go and say, well Frank, clearly you're just not good <laughs> at making videos. You messed up, you used the wrong numbers, you made a dumb mistake. Here's the thing. Those numbers are the numbers that you will find across the internet. Go to Google right now and type in what are the percentages of the MBTI's 2021 and those numbers that are outdated, which I gave you in that previous video, are the number, 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 <laughs> the numbers you will find everywhere. In fairness, Susan Storm over at Psychology Junkie does have the most recent numbers on her site. However, many, 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 many more sites and articles and whatever cite the old numbers. The commenter who said, hey, these are outdated, gave me a link to the MBTI manual supplement, which is not an easy thing to find. All joking aside, th this video will be like the first video on YouTube to give out the accurate new information. I'm not actually sure if that's true. The new numbers, uh, they're shocking. Yeah, so the INFJ, um, well, is it the rarest personality type according to the new numbers? Stay tuned to find out. Here we go. Oh, I am really dizzy now. Oh, uh, I regret that. Okay, welcome to the statistics laboratory where this time hopefully I will give you accurate and up-to-date numbers. And of course, the ironic thing is the video with the bad numbers will probably get more views than this one, but <laughs> Yeah, that's how it goes. This newer data we're about to look at is taken from surveys in 2018, which is pretty recent, considering that the old data was from like, I don't know, the year 2000. First up, let's just look at the four letters and the percentages of each dichotomy. Of course, by the word dichotomy, we mean something that has two options. So we look at introvert versus extrovert. The new numbers are 61.2% of people are introverts, whereas 38.8% are extroverts. That is a 10.5% swing. So it's interesting to see that more people are identifying themselves as introverts now than they did 20 years ago. Next up is sensing versus intuition, S versus N. And of course, just a quick explanation, sensing and intuition are how we take in information. Sensing is looking at the facts and what is observable and provable. Intuition is looking at the broader concepts and the overview of generally what's going on, the big picture. This one has changed, but maybe not quite as dramatically. And the new numbers are 68.5% prefer sensing and 31.5% prefer intuition. So we're shifting a little bit more towards more people preferring intuition, but it's still clearly majority sensing. Next is F or T, thinking or feeling, how we make decisions. Is it thinking logical or is it feeling based on values and emotions? This one is actually the biggest swing there is. Before we had 59.8% of people preferred feeling and 40.2% preferred thinking. That has swung almost 12 points to now 47.9% prefer feeling and 52.1% prefer thinking. Previously, the results indicated that most people were feelers and now it's the other way around. Most people test as thinkers, which frankly surprises me a bit, but you know, that's what, that's what the numbers tell us. And then we come to the last one, J or P, judging or perceiving. The judges are a little bit more planned out and organized. The perceiver is a little bit more spontaneous. This one has stayed pretty much the same with only 1.6% uh, change over time. 52.5% 
are judgers and 47.5% are perceivers. Okay, so in part two of the video, we will go through the 16 personalities in order from the most prevalent in the population to the least, the most common to the rarest. Is INFJ still going to be the rarest in these new rankings? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Okay, let's just get into it from the most common type to the least common type, one by one. Let's start with the most common type. You'll remember previously, the most common type was ISFJ. It is not so anymore, but the ISFJ's close cousin, the ISTJ, is now the most common type with 17.6% of the population. I forgot how to speak when I was talking just now. This is a big percentage of the population considering that in the old statistics, the most common type was ISFJ with 13.8%. So now the ISTJ is even more common than the previous number one type if I'm making sense right now. The number two most common type is the ISFJ. So they fell from the most common to the second most common at 10.6% of the population. At the number three position, we have the ISTP at 9.4% of the population. The ISTP really had a boost because previously they were the number eight most common type and they've moved up to three. The next type, which moved from the number five spot to the number four spot, is the ESTJ with 8% of the population. What I'm noticing is that there is a clear shift from SF types being in the top positions last time to ST types being the more dominant ones this time around. And of course that makes sense given what we talked about in the first part of the video where we saw a big shift from the old statistics saying most people prefer feeling to the new ones saying that most people prefer thinking. Coming in at the number five spot, moving up from number seven, our first intuitive type, the ENFP, with 7.5% of the population. So once again, the ENFP is the most common intuitive type. Our number six type is the ISFP with 6.7% of the population, falling from the number four rank. And then the number seven most common type, the ISFP's very close cousin, the INFP, with 6.4% of the population. The INFP moved up the list from the ninth most common to the seventh most common. Our number eight on the list is the ESFJ with 6.3% of the population. And this type took the biggest tumble down the list. Previously, it was at the number two spot, the second most common type, and now it's fallen to eighth. Quite surprising. The number nine spot, having fallen from the number six spot previously, is the ESFP with 5.1% of the population. Number 10 is the ESTP with 4.9% of the population, same ranking as it was last time. Number 11 also is holding its rank from last time, the INTP with 4.5% of the population. Coming in at number 12 is the INTJ. This has moved up the list from the number 14 spot with 3.1% of the population. Coming in at number 13 is the ENTP with 3% of the population. So if you've been paying attention, we only have three more to go. We have the ENFJ, the ENTJ, and the INFJ. Will the INFJ keep its spot as the rarest personality type? Or will it be unseated? by another. And it's worth pointing out that it doesn't really matter. Like, I, <laughs> to be honest with you, the whole rarity thing is just marketing. Websites, YouTube channels, whatever. It's just very clickable to say, are you the rarest personality type? Doesn't mean a type is more special than another type. It just means that this is how many people happen to test as this type on this particular test. So take this for what it is, a ranking that can change arbitrarily at any time. In the number 14 slot, we have the INFJ at 2.9%, previously the rarest personality type. Previously, it had polled as 1.5% of the population. So we've seen it almost double in the last 20 years or whatever between polls. The INFJ has been unseated. But by whom? So now we're down to our last two types, if you've been keeping track. The only ones left are ENTJ and ENFJ. So 
Which one of those two has come in, has surveyed as the rarest personality type? The real rarest personality type. So everyone has got to start making videos now about, are you this type, the rarest personality type? So the rarest personality type, according to this official survey by the Myers-Briggs company, as of 2018, is the ENTJ with 1.8% of the population. Interestingly, the old data also had them as 1.8% of the population, but they were at the number 15 slot. Then of course that leaves us with ENFJ being the second rarest type, the number 15 slot, going down the list from number 13 last time. So there you have it folks, uh, INFJ has been unseated as the rarest personality type. Let me know what you think about these statistics in the comments below. If you want to see another controversial video where I spill the tea on all 16 personalities, click this video right here. Or if you want to find another video in the playlist to watch, check out the playlist right here. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay cool and attractive.